and welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is on the anxiety and the little confusion across the country with regards to petrol pricing and uh, for scarcity. Uh, reports have it that in the last 48 hours, some petrol stations have uh, stopped selling petrol. And of course, uh, uh, some people would describe it as hoarding petrol. Uh, some others, of course, are uh, increasing the price on their pumps uh, to Nigerians. Um, we asked earlier um, on the program this morning what it is like in your location. Uh, do you have petrol you know, available? Is it still sold at 162 or 165 uh, naira per litre? Uh, this morning we're joined um, on the program by Mr. Afolabi Akin Rogunde, who's um, an invest investment manager, um, all partnerships for energy access. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear us yet, but we'll uh, definitely connect with him. The conversation really this morning is um, on the, once again, you know, we're talking about forest scarcity. Um, if you want to look at the political angle to it, the government uh, a couple of years ago had said that it was one thing that would never happen during, you know, the, the Buhari administration. Um, they had even boasted, I think it was Bashar Ahmad who had boasted then, that um, the PDP government of 16 years was, you know, was plagued with um, um, for scarcity, you know, every Christmas, you know, there's for scarcity. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, always, you know, a challenge like that for Nigerians. And then it wasn't going to happen, you know. And of course, they, they were good to their word, you know, it didn't happen. But the prices continue to increase. Yes. There have been different reasons why the prices continue to increase. Uh, there's been a controversy over whether a subsidy has been stopped or hasn't been stopped. Um, and so it's, it's very confusing for Nigerians. Can Nigerians afford to buy petrol for higher than 162? Even if, yes, they say that Nigerians continue to adapt to even the worst situations, and no matter what price you put it, they would eventually adapt. But can Nigerians continue to adapt as it climbs higher? And also, what are the reasons why it is likely, even if the NNPC says that uh, there will be no increment in the month of March, will there be in April? Will there be in May? Is it likely that as uh, the international price of crude oil increases, petrol price here in Nigeria would also increase? Is there you know, possibilities that we would ever be able to fix any of our refineries to ensure that we can get petrol as, of course, one of the world's largest producers of crude oil, we can get petrol um, uh, at a cheap price? Um, and so these are some of the conversations that we, of course, will be having this morning when um, we can fully connect with our guests. Morning, sir. Can you hear us? Hello. Yes, good morning. morning can you, I can hear you clearly. Okay, brilliant. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. I, I want to you know, get straight into it. There is, of course, anxiety across the country. Uh, the possibilities of another increment in petrol price. Uh, the NNPC is saying that there would be no increment in the month of March. Um, but, of course, the filling stations that already started to hoard petrol or shut down uh, sales for now. Um, let's get your thoughts on the likelihood of another increment um, in petrol price um, here in Nigeria. Okay, well, I think um, in terms of what is happening in the market right now, I think there was a word you used earlier when you were making your intro, and that was the word confusion. Um, I would also use probably a word, the word disconnect. Um, we've been having relatively stable supply of, of, of petrol for, 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 for a few months, um, especially for the, for the year going into, for the last one year going into February um, 2021. However, because of a disconnect of sorts between key agencies or parties in the petrol value chain, we, we have this happening happening once again. And of course, this typically happens when you have major changes in the key variables that contribute to determining the, the, the prices of petroleum products, especially petrol in Nigeria. And of course, as you know, the two most significant of these variables are basically changes in the cost of, of, the, of the core product itself, crude oil, and of course, the changes in the value of the Naira. Because obviously all of us pay naira, naira, naira at the pumps, and whenever any of these any of these key variables change, then 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 the government has to make a decision to either to either subsidize and protect the the domestic market for, from the vagaries of the of the changes in the price of the product in the global market, or depending on how or, or depending on, on on how well the or, or, or how deep the the the, the pockets of the of the government is decide. Come, we cannot afford to do this. We need to. We need to release this levers a bit. So, so I think uh, probably we'll, they, those conversations are probably being held right now 
a lot of things are being reviewed and, and a decision will, will probably be made. But what is happening right now is probably because there is a disconnect between probably what the people who are selling these products are seeing, what the government agencies are telling them, and what, uh, and what is happening in the market. So that is what is probably causing what we're seeing at the petrol pumps right now. Okay, one of the issues we've identified, you know, with regards government and people has been communication. But the NNPC in this case has been talking. They've been communicating with us since yesterday, trying to allay our fears, saying, and I quote, the, uh, the corporation is not contemplating any raise in the price of petrol in March in order not to jeopardize the ongoing engagement with the organized labor and other stakeholders. The NNPC says, quote, we will not expose the ordinary Nigerian to any hardship. They went on to further caution petroleum products marketers not to engage in arbitrary price increase or hoarding of fuel in order not to create artificial scarcity and unnecessary hardship. Now, in this case, that it seems that the NNPC is in touch with us. They're communicating and letting us know what they, where they stand on this matter. Why do we still have this air of you know, anxiety, like my colleague has put it, where some, you know, Patrol, some fueling stations are hot in fuel, and the queues at the fueling stations are getting longer. Yes, I think the, the core thing, really, if, if, if you are in the downstream sector, the downstream sector is the volume business. If you are not pushing volumes out, you are not making money because the margins are very, very thin. So if any, if any, marketer, if, if any marketer right now is not selling product, that means there is something happening within that value chain that, 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 that is hindering them. So yes, I understand that the NNPC is saying what, 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 what they are saying. But of course, you will need to look at every single element in that, in that petrol value chain, so to speak, and find out what, what is hindering the, the continued flow of product. Is, is, it, is it that the NNPC is not important as much? Is it that is it that is it that the is it that the equalization fund is not is not moving? Is it that is it that marketers are not getting repaid for for the for the for the for for, for, for the subsidy amounts they were supposed to have to have to, to have been paid by now? Is it is, is it is it the challenge at the CBN? So there are a lot of elements, there are a lot of points. You know that I can I can name 10, 10 15, 20 points which, which can be responsible for what we are seeing at the pumps today in, in Nigeria. So I think probably uh, parties who are interested, parties who are who are responsible for this, will probably have to sit down and say what is happening because really um, every every marketer wants to 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 start pumping petrol because that's the only way they make business. But if you are uncertain as to what is happening, if you are uncertain as to when you are going to get your next shipment, if you are uncertain as to what the price is going to be, if you are uncertain as to what whether what you are doing right now, whether whether you are going to make a loss or what you are selling right now, and then so so the, the next thing, the next best thing you need to do as an individual marketer is to just wait. So I think we need to sit down and and have a, and, need, and and the people who are planning the the, the system as a whole, they need to sit down and, and find out what is happening as a whole to to to, to the network, determine are we number one are we do we even have a subsidy because I've heard yes so subsidy has been removed I've seen uh, with, but we still have equalization happening we still have things happening in the in the system. We, all of which don't point towards you having a subsidy at all. And then we still hear, keep hearing reports in the media that, yes, subsidies are in place. Government is spending X amount. Landing cost of petrol is 200 and something now, whereas we were still paying 160 um, as, of, as, of, as of a month ago or two months ago. So, 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 so there are many, many things which, which, which are happening, many, many things which are sending mixed signals, really. To, 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 the, to, to the man on the street who is buying, to the, to, to, to the petroleum marketers themselves. And once people see mixed signals, all, all sorts of funny, funny actions begin to happen. All right. Um, let's you know, focus a little bit more on the conversation with regards uh, subsidy. Um, you know, that, you know, like you said, you know, is something that is you know, a little confusing for Nigerians. Um, is it really even possible for us to um, stop paying subsidy or subsidizing uh, petrol in Nigeria as it stands. Um, people would argue that we could have done better over time to at least fix one of the refineries. Yeah. Uh, the government but says think, that I the refineries think, are more um, I think if you, if you sit down and you talk to... Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think... Hello? Yes, please go ahead, uh, Mr. Akin Arumunde. Okay. Yes. Yes. Th th thank you. As I will, with the, the core thing really at the end of the day is that we have to we, subsidy is a function of, of our of, of our of how rich your company is, your or your or your country is as a whole, of of how deep your your reserves are. 
as as a as a country how cheaply it is you are you are producing this product because whether whether you do you like it or not everything that is used to to produce crude oil in nigeria except the human beings even a lot of the human beings are are, are actually even imported is priced in dollars so it is not free we, yes we, we know we, we have petrol but we have crude oil under under the under the ground in nigeria but at the end of the day it still remains a business and so the government needs to decide if it is if, if it can if it can sustainably subsidize prices and if it believes it cannot what what method what system what process will it will it adopt to actually win the country off subsidies will it be a gradual method will it or will it be a sharp shock which would be or would we do even have to decide how do you time it because at the end of the day whether we have two three four five refineries running you have to find, you have to decide that yes you as a country have to decide what you you do all right i just wanted to quickly if you can in 30 seconds speak about the um the likelihood of uh, the petroleum industry bill you know and what change this might in any way bring uh, the national assembly has made promises about it being signed and passed by april uh, do you think that might in any way help in sorting out some of the confusion that we're dealing with here well i think i think um the jury is still out on the on, on the on the pib um, i will not want to to comment too too deeply into that and we, we've had we've had like about a 16 17 year journey on this pip so if it is passed at least there will be there will be a, a sense of relief of some of some sort that at least uh, at least we have the rules of the road so to speak for the running of the of the petroleum industry but as you know that is still upstream midstream and downstream and so and so that 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 that, that is a complex that 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 is another matter entirely. But the, but the critical issue really as a country is we have to decide whether we can afford to actually continue to, to subsidize p p p p petrol. The market for diesel, for example, has been, has, has been, has been fully deregulated for, for well over a decade now, and we don't have this, these issues happening. But, but, but the challenge we, we continue to have is that we as a country, our population continues to, to, to grow. Our population has tripled in my own lifetime alone. I don't, I don't know how many countries in the world have that, have that profile of population growth. The quantity of petroleum that we, of, of crude oil that we continue to, to, to produce as a company, as a country, has pretty much stagnated. And even with the, with the current OPEC quotas, has actually even dropped. We're producing barely 1.4 million barrels today out of about a potential of, 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 of about 2 million barrels just to keep petroleum prices at the prices where they are today. So the question remains, are we as a country rich enough? Are we able to sustainable keep, sustainably keep these prices at the levels which they are today? And if, and if we believe we are not, because as I said earlier, there are a lot of forces no, in, in, in affect, affecting petroleum prices. If, if, you're, if, you, if the value of the naira continues to have every 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 ten year, every five, six, seven, seven, eight years or thereabouts, that means that even if the prices of petroleum remain stable and doesn't change, you will have to to pay more at the pumps. And even if you decide that, let us use our own production for every barrel of of, of petrol that you decide to to take and use for the domestic market in a subsidized manner. That is a barrier you could have sold for times five or times six of that value and gain right. value from it as a country. So so, so it is a catch-22 situation. Um, the government needs to sit down, think about it, and, and then make a decision, and then ensure that this the decision is worked right across that value chain so that everybody is, on the, is singing on the same song sheet. All right. Um, lastly, before we let you go, if we were to you know, stand by the words of the NMPC, that you know, say that there are no plans to increase the price of fuel in March. Would you say that panic buying has a role to play in all of this? And that it's, it's now like a circle when people are panicking and it's making, it's, it's in itself is contributing to the whole situation where in our sims there's artificial scarcity, people are going to queue up in the petrol stations and these uh, stations are now hoarding fuel. So would you say we have a role to play in this situation now? I know people say people, people always mention panic buying, but but really at the end of the day, this is petrol, and and the and the average person. Oh yes, I think. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Go ahead. Okay, excellent. I think people talk about panic buying, but I, but I, but I believe as you do that the average Nigerian doesn't have those kind of resources necessary to 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 keep to keep twenty kegs of petrol 
you know, in, in their houses. I, I still suspect, really, that there is something happening in the value chain. And this is being translated to what you are seeing on the streets. The average, the average petroleum marketer wants to sell, sell his product, get another, uh, get another truck in, and make as much money as, as, as possible. So, so really, I, I would suspect that there, some, there is a disconnect somewhere in the value chain, whether it is the NNPC, the ministry, the PPPRA, wherever it is, needs to sit down, find out where that challenge is in that, in that value chain. It may not be at the NNPC, it may or may not be at the, at the, at the NNPC end, but of, but of course, the NNPC is just one step within a, within a value chain that still has quite a few more, more players with, within it. All right. Um, Thank I you very much, Mr. Yeah. Afolabi, uh, for your thoughts this morning. I mean, the government met, they met yesterday, uh, rather they met last week, and uh, they were supposed to meet with governors to discuss, you know, on the fuel price. I really wonder what the outcome of that discussion was if, you know, a week later we're hearing talks about panic buying and, you know, a possible increase in the price of fuel. But uh, Mr. Afolabi Akin uh, the investment manager for all uh, partnership access, right? Thank you very much for uh, coming on the breakfast this morning. All right. Um, I'm yep. not sure if you can hear us. Okay. Well, thanks. There's uh, a once bit of again. a delay in the communication. Yeah. So and that, that, there's that. also the part where petrol station owners and managers um, look for the slightest um, idea of chaos to shut down sales and hoard pro, uh, you know, products so that they can increase. It's economics. Um, Even during the rain, <laughs> bus drivers increase the price of buses. Even yes. though it's still the same distance to go from point A to B, they just shoot it up. Yes, so that, everybody's trying to milk the system I, somehow. I saw that a lot. Money. I saw that a lot in Enugu, where you know, you know that these two petrol stations, maybe one here and the other one across the road, are mm. owned by the same company, but one of them is an NNPC mm. uh, station. And so when there is, you know, that little whisper of scarcity or you know chaos anywhere, they shut one down, the one that you know is not allowed to sell, the NNPC was not allowed to sell beyond government regulated price, and then the other one continues to sell, but at, at and a the money price. goes to one account, doesn't it? It does. Anyway, right. so yes, that's it for the fuel price story. I don't know, are you panic buying? You should shouldn't panic by NMPC says, you know, hopefully the price of fuel will not get any higher in March. But let's know your thoughts about this. Uh, Twitter at us at Plus TV Africa, you know, on all social media platforms as well. We'll now be turning to talk about coronavirus and vaccines. Have you registered? Let's talk about that after the break.